and we're doing a program called Angels Camp Remembered and we're going to talk about mining and we felt it was very appropriate for us to come to the Utica Mansion to do our program because it was once owned and lived in by the manager of the Utica Mine. It is now owned by Ted and Sherry Follendorf and today we're going to speak with Guy Castle. Guy, uh, could you say hello to our audience and tell me what Angels Camp was like when you were born here? Well, when I was born here, everything downtown was all mud. All and mud. They, all mud in the middle of the streets. <laughs> no pavement. No pavement. And there was two crosswalks that went across the middle of the town, one right in front of the old Calaveras Hotel, and one down about, oh, maybe where the old, just above the old livery stable. Mm. And the teams used to come in and have to turn around and go back out come in the side street and go in and deliver and turn Why? around. Why? Because it was narrow and... No, because the boardwalks were oh, across. Board oh, that it was narrow, truly. No, it's just as wide as it is today, but they had to walk all the way across and it was up so you wouldn't have to walk in the mud. Oh, I see. That's why they had boardwalks. Right. And the, all the sidewalks were boards. So it was mud in the winter and dusty in the summer. Right. And I know they had cattle drives right through Angel's Camp. Yes. I, in fact, I saw a picture. That's why I mentioned that. That's the old oxen team that pulled in a wagon during the Jubilee in about 1928, 29. What year were you born? 1910. So you're 74 years old. Right. And you've been a miner all of your life, is that right? Yeah. When I did got you... When did you start? I started mining in 1931. I got out of high school in 29 and went to work in the Angels Iron Works foundry to learn a pattern maker's trade. And then the big depression come. <laughs> that helped everybody. Well, then I went to work in a the mine. There was no work then. They shut the foundry down. Nothing to do. Uh -huh. So I started to raise a family so I had to go to work. So what mine did you... Uh, Calaver Central gravel mine up in Aldeville. Okay, so the gravel mine is not gold mining. Yes, it is. Oh, it is gold mining. Absolutely. Placer. Why do they call it gravel? Because it's all gravel. It's an old riverbed that's dried up and it's 360 feet deep. So this is where they take a dredger and they go no, through? No, this is all underground, drift mining, just like hard rock. Okay, you explain to me that what the different types of mining is then. If you, have, if you are a placer miner, you're taking gold up off the ground up. from the top. No, plaster mining, you take it underneath the ground. That's where you dig it. Uh, a dig big it tuck. off of the bedrock, off of the hard rock. It's okay. gravel on top, and bedrock on the, and the gold lays on the bedrock, and sometimes up in the gravel, if the gravel is cemented, sometimes it is pretty hard, almost mm -hmm. like hard rock. And they take the gravel off, and they just put it in a skip, and hoist it on top, and they have a big trommel, and they wash mm -hmm. it. Now, there's, there's a lot of mining. Of course, everyone knows there's a lot of mining in this area. Approximately how many mines were there in the Angels Camp area? Oh, approximately about 25, I guess. Wow, that's a bunch. So you had 25 mines. Were they going all at the same time or sort right. of over? all the really? same time. About 5,000 miners working at one oh, time. Oh, my goodness. So when you were, all of these mines, were they the same type of mine, or are there some of them one kind and some of them Well, there was kind? a couple of plaster mines, and the rest were mostly all hard rock mines, or we call them quartz mines, mining the hard rock. Now, when we talked earlier, you showed me some of the mining equipment that you had, and it was really pretty primitive. Now, mm. that first mine you worked in, um, what kind of lighting did you use? We used carbide lights from the first mining I used, and the soft cap. Want to see it? Sure. That's the kind right there. Why don't you try that on? Oh, 
<laughs> is that comfortable? Was that yeah. a comfortable device mm -hmm. to wear? Is yeah. that real heavy? No. Okay, now the carbide pellets go into this little container. Right. Show me how it works. Carbide okay. goes in there. When you put it together here. When your water goes in here. Okay, you put water with carbide. Carbide, and then you turn your water on. This is to hold it for a dough. Just barely drips in the bottom. And the gas comes out there. Okay, and it forms and a you, gas. You've got a flint here that you strike. It makes a light. Just like a cigarette lighter. Just strike Almost the, the same. It mm -hmm. lights up. Now, uh, does this give acrid fumes when you're down in the mines, or was it no, not, adequate? No, uh -uh. not too much fumes? No, very little. But before that, what did they use for light? Well, before that, with my dad, they used this kind, candlestick. <laughs> they carried them till they got down to where they're going to work, and then they stuck them into the wall or into a timber, and they went to work. And that's the size candle they would use? Yes, they, used, they had a lot of them. They always packed a lot of candles in their pocket. I guess so. How long would one of those last? I don't know, maybe about an hour. Huh. Well, it's very primitive. <laughs> right. So when you were when you were mining, uh, tell me about tell me the basics of mining. I mean, what what exactly did you do in any given day that you went into the mine? Say in 1929 when you were first mined. Well, in 1931, we when you start in a mine, you start in what they say you're a mucker. So oh, they gosh. give you a, a nice shovel, you know, and a ton car <laughs> to hold a ton of rock, and you fill it, and you got to fill. We filled. Uh, he had to muck 16 ton per man per day. Oh, by hand, just a, a shovel. Just, shovel a miner was just really a hard work laborer. That's right. And then when you maybe got a little, quite a bit of that, and they liked you, and you were working good, maybe then they give you a chuck tendon job. That's to help the miner drill. Okay, now so, so, someone rock. is drilling into the rock and breaking Always. big pieces off. No, not big. They blast it and it breaks it up okay. fine. So it's fine pieces and you're just scooping right. them into a you put a, a car. Most of them put a floor down, either a sheet of iron or two by twelves, and you muck off of that with a oh, square point. So you had a smooth surface to right. stand on. Right, absolutely. Okay. Practical. Um, in some of the mines that you worked in, did they take mules down and do anything with mules? I've well, heard stories about that. That's before my time. I when see. When my dad worked, they had mules in the mine. They pulled the cars. Okay, so they, their function was mainly just to pull the ore cars back yes. up or back down. Yes, in and down. out of the horizontal drifts, okay. wherever they were working, drifting or stoping or whatever. All right, then after uh, mucking and chuck tending, then what would you do? Then you become a miner, they let you do the drilling and oh. blasting. <laughs> drilling and blasting. Yeah, right. Uh, you showed me, uh, you showed me, well, let me get it. A little torture device here I'd like our audience to see. What do you have? I have your pestle. Only I think it's so heavy I'm not sure I can lift it. Now, why don't you try and explain this to me? <laughs> now that's a mortar and pedal stone. They put rocks in there and they pound them and grind them up to see if there's any gold in them. They pan them when they grind it up fine enough. I mean, what does this thing weigh? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a kind of a homemade pedestal. The most of them are short, oh. but they're heavy. They're as heavy as that. They gotta be heavy or they wouldn't crush the rock. No wonder you're so young looking, carrying around all this stuff. <laughs> so, after you crush it up fine, then they would pan it and see if there was any gold in it. So it was a tube. It was just like experimenting or trying to find out, find if there's a ledge, if it has gold in it. So then maybe one of the superintendents would go down and kind of take a little sample and use this. And well, they had a, up on top after, when you this is for prospecting, then after the, all the mines had an assayer, and he would assay the rock. He would grind it I up. See and assay it, and then tell you how much gold, and how much copper, and how much silver was in it. That was the scientific end of mine, yes, right? Yes, right. Okay. Now you have here some other tools of torture. Maybe you can get up and explain to our audience what they are. Okay. 
I was kind of interested in this. I thought it was a jackhammer and I was right. Yes. Now, why would you need a jackhammer in the mines? You use a jackhammer to break the rock. It's an air machine that runs by air. This is one, this is about the first rotating jackhammer that they made. The first, the first ones they made were just like a spader. They were just hit, but they wouldn't rotate. Now these rotated and they drilled holes. Well, if they had a steel that long or they generally had, if we were mounted on a machine or so mounted on a bar, well, they would drill four, five, or six foot rounds in the rock, hard rock. This, this blade is, oh, six foot deep. Yes. Okay, so in other words, you, this is a jackhammer, really. Right. And you dig a hole in the rock and put a piece of uh, put dynamite, dynamite in it. And that's how you, I yes. see. Yes, absolutely, yeah. How many of these would be working in the mine? Well, in a big mine, it'd probably be, with, like Carson Hill out there, they had about, eight or 10 levels from the 1100 down. It had 11, 15, 50, 1600, 21, 22, 23, 25, 28, 3000, 35. <gasps> oh. And they had machines on every level. So it's pretty noisy yeah. down there, huh? Was well, this whatever. the only noisy thing in the mines? Well, yes, probably. Blasting was the most noisy. Well, the, you didn't stay in the mines when they blasted? Oh yes, sure, just you out. Went I just went out around the grift in the corner and waited till your shots went off. Oh, I can't believe that. That's, that was very dangerous. Yeah, no. I mean, weren't you afraid of cave-ins? No, the rock, hard rock, you don't cave. If you're in bad ground, it's different, but this was oh, all I hard see. So, rock. So they knew what they were doing. Yes. I thought maybe it was just a total absence of no safety way. features. No uh way, -uh. oh. So the powder expert, I mean, he must have known what he was doing. He was an expert in his job, and he did the blasting, and everyone trusted him. No, you did it. If you, wasn't, if you... Oh, each of you did your own. Sure, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> you have I have to. a lot to learn about mining. I know one thing already. I wouldn't do it, no matter what they paid me. What did they pay you, Guy, approximately in 1930, say? Started off at three and a half per day. Oh, for just hard rock labor, three yeah. and a half a day. So you're still mining, is that right? Yeah, we do for different people, like the golf there at Carson, I do a little drilling and blasting for them. Still, still blasting. Mm -hmm. There's a Canadian outfit in there now sampling. So mm -hmm. we sample a little lower by drilling and blasting and then they leach it mostly to see if how much gold they can get out of a leach process. Um, once you had all this ore, I mean, once a miner mucked all this ore into a car, and they hauled it up to the surface. All right, now they've got the ore. How do they get the gold out? They take it to, he's got that all set up. They take and put it into a crusher, crush it real fine, maybe down to about an inch, and it goes into a stamp mill then in those days. First okay. Day. Oh, that's right. The, like the model that we saw over at the Angels Camp Museum. Mm -hmm. Okay, That'll that noisy, you. terrible machine. That'll tell you. <laughs> Okay, uh, but you were, you were explaining to me that you collected a souvenir of some great big grinding stones that were used that the Spanish settlers brought up to the mines. Yeah, that was the old arrastas they used. With the Mexicans brought them in. They had seven of them in the early days out on Carson Hill. Seven arrastas. Let's take a look at those. Let me get that though. They built an arrasta just about like this table, only it's perfectly round. And then here, they put these big quartz rocks on the bottom and they just shape them. So they go, put them all the way around. And then they put another big, they weigh about from a half a ton to a ton a piece when they first mm -hmm. put them. And then they grind them along till they get to smooth. The Till the rocks, Til the get, rocks smooth. get smooth. Okay. And then they put the the ore that they want to grind and see how much gold is in it. They put that in there. They put about a, a ton at a time oh. to one arasta. And they drill a hole in this top one, put a chain in it, and this top one Just goes right around. They have about three or four of them in a row. I see. So it's going just around the at old one time. 
very old principle of rub two rocks right. together and you're going to, to smash something. To grind a rock. <laughs> to grind a rock up. Fine. Then after they keep grinding, maybe in a couple hours they'll dig down into the pulp. It'll be a pulp it got a little water in it. Then they'll put it in a pan that'll sample it. If there's free gold, then they'll add mercury. Mm -hmm. They keep adding mercury till they can get no more free gold. Then they know they got amalgam. They got all the they got everything they can get. All out of the it. gold, the free gold, okay, the free turned gold. into amalgam. That's mercury and gold. It's called amalgam. Okay. And they take and they burn that and get the free gold. They put it in a retort. <laughs> It's like an excruciating process to me. I guess mining is, well, it's a tough job. And it still is. Has it changed much, Guy? Yes, quite a bit. Because they got all new advanced machinery. Today you can, instead of, they might have four or five machines on one, we call a jumbo. It's a, uh -huh. they run it on tracks or a tractor right up to a face. And they drill most all the holes at one time. Oh, I see. So, uh, but they're still basically though it's still the same thing. Basically, but it's Poles faster and still blowing and it up and, yeah, and getting still the ore down, out, and, then they, and then still crushing the rock. Then they have what they call a load haul and dump machine uh -huh. that's on either tracks or rubber tired. It's like a little bit of a machine. It's got a bucket goes in, scoops up the muck, takes it out, take it out. <laughs> they dump it. A little more so, mechanized, but yes, still all mechanized. The basic, the same yes. basic process, huh? Well. How many ton of rock could this thing crush in 24 hours? One, one ton. Is that all? That's all. What about the stamp mill? How well, many tons of stamp, rock? Well, each stamp would crush about four or five ton in 24 hours. So it was a big improvement over yes, the they would. method. Well, 120 stamps a Utica had over here. 120? 120. All going at the same all time? All going at the same time. Oh, and you can still hear? <laughs> <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> oh. Um, now they don't use stamp mills anymore. Is that right? Well, some do. They they generally do it. If they do it now, they do it to just to crush the rock up, maybe to about an inch or finer for a primary crusher, like they a lot of them instead of a crusher. Then it goes into a ball mill or a rod mill. A rod mill they got long rods in them that crush the rock. Hmm. Ball mills got round balls from three inches hmm. goes around. They just turn the mill so fast that the ball would. The rock gets in between them and grinds it up. When it gets, they got a screen on one end, and it'll, when it gets that fine, it'll go out. Hmm. And then it either goes on to a concentrating table or an amalgamation plate. And today, a lot of they use the flotation. That's hmm. where they float the ore. Some ore, they'll, if it's got, if the ore has two or three minerals in it, they'll float one and sink the other. And the ore, and so the, they're floating the actual values. Okay. The values, okay. and the values come up in bubbles. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> yeah, that's what. And they all the concept all goes on the floor, and they spread them out, or they dry them. It goes through a dryer, and they dry them, and then they ship them. Hmm. Well, it's a lot different anyway. Which which yes. method do you like best, the old or the new? <laughs> <laughs> the new is better. <laughs> <laughs> easier, huh? A lot easier. I'll get it. Now that we've talked about all this rock crushing and stuff, um, I'd like to see have our audience see the stamp mill, the little mock stamp mill that they have at the Angels Museum. I, you know, so that you can. This is a small stamp mill reproduced by Virgil Guglieri in the Maloney Stamp Mill in California. The rock is fed right here to the back of the stamp mill. Come down. They have a feeder coming out right here. Go down into the stamp mill, these run up and down and they're big, they crush the rock and the rock has to be crushed fine enough so it comes out through this screen. It comes out through the screen, it goes down into this small ball mill and there it is crushed to the fineness, real fine. When it's fine enough, it comes out of there and goes down on the amalgamation plate. This is, plate is pure copper electroplated with pure silver and mercury is rubbed over the plate all over and then that catches the fine gold. From there it goes down 
to the concentrating table, and there the tables catch all the fine concentrates. And it, after it catches the concentrates, it runs out and goes down into a pile. They let a pile, and they spread the pile out as a rule and let it dry. And from there, it's shipped to a smelter. These stamp mills are very noisy when they are running. I'd like to also take a look at some of these pictures that you have. This one shows mining in the days when they still had the candles in the timbers. Right. Which I think is very interesting, that candle that you showed us. Is there anyone there that you know? No, ma nobody. All they can see is Because this was before your time. Right. I, keep, I keep trying to make you older, Guy. See, that's a ton car, and they've got it full of rock, and it's about ready to be pushed out to the station and dumped into a chute where then the ho skip will hoist it to the surface. Gee, none of those miners look well fed. They all look skinny. <laughs> they had to work hard. <laughs> I guess so. They worked in those days 10 hours a day. Long day for $3, huh? In fact, that was probably before $3 a day. Okay, this is you and Chris Porovich, right? Yes, that's out of my little mill out at Carson Hill on Carson Creek. With the two concentrating tables and we got a little bin there and the screen, we screen out the fine stuff and goes on the lower table. And then it comes off into a little chute and goes into my little ball mill and it's got a little scoop on it. And it grinds it up to about 60 mesh. And then it goes out the bottom and comes on the upper table. Okay, now this is something that you still do as a hobby. Yes. You know, you, you attend your own little mine, mm -hmm. mining operation and uh, you worked as a miner all your life. It kind of gets in the blood. Well, not all. Well, I prospected all my life, but I had spent 20 years at the Calaveras cement plant. Oh. After 42, I. So you worked, I worked at the iron foundry. You worked in the mines. I worked at, you worked the, at Calaveras cement. Where else did you work? I worked at the U.S. Vanadium and Bishop. And I worked in uh, Sutter Creek at the Central Eureka there. That's a hard rock. And I worked at uh, there's. There's a mother load central out here at Albany Flat. I worked there. But none right in Angels, right close. Only the gravel mine and that one mine out there. Otherwise, I worked out at Copperopolis in the copper mine. Campus Seco, that's another copper mine in Angels. That's about 20 miles, just about six miles below Valley Springs, Campus Seco. Is there anything about mining that you don't know? <laughs> <laughs> Could be, all the <laughs> latest stuff. <laughs> they got all this new stuff on blasting. I haven't caught up with that. Well, you uh, don't really have to. <laughs> what mine is this? That's the cross shaft, set right up behind angels there on the hill. I see that. It says Cyrus Noble. Uh, good that, whiskey. Oh, is that what that is? <laughs> <laughs> I saw it was a nice billboard. And good clothing, David and Sons. Yeah. And this is what mine? Oh, that's a Utica stamp mill right there. That's 120 stamps. The back is so tall, it looks like. It uh, is really I tall. Mean, it's, they, stick, they put up there on the top. They have probably a small crusher and they crush it in a great big bin. It goes from the bin to each one of the stamps. The stamp they carry, there's a mortar box. They have five stamps to each mortar box. And there's feeders. They have a feeder on it. One stamp will have a clamp on it with a little thing sticking out, and that'll hit a little hook that'll turn the feeder plate just one tooth at a time, just <laughs> barely feeding the Sending it in there, just sending it in there. All the way around, then goes down three, four different floors. No wonder it's so tall. Like steps. Then across there, that's the chlorine works. That's where they chlorine the sulfide that had gold in them. They take the gold off to free it. Hmm. I'm always amazed when I look at pictures, old pictures of Angel's Camp in the area, how young the trees are. There's hardly any. There's more trees now than there was in the old days. 
And this is an interesting picture. That's the old tractors in that come down from the sawmill above Murphy's that they haul lumber down. What Those wheels yeah. are way above that man's head. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they are. And it was obviously steam, or was that coal? Steam? Steam. And look at all it could carry. It looks mm. like there's even another car beyond this one mm -hmm. holding lumber. Yeah. Heavy, heavy. And this mine is which one? Carson Hill Gold Carson Mine. Carson Hill. That's this is the big daddy, huh? Yeah, <laughs> this is the one that's down at Maloney's. That was all those buildings where they're, of course, now they're all underwater. Was this the richest mine of the Motherlode area here, Angel's Camp? I, I don't know whether it was or not. The Utica was rich. And the old Utica here in the park right here. But I don't know. That worked a long time. That was rich. I think it was the richest on the surface. Hmm. So this is a surface mine where they mine on the surface and they just keep well, going Well, yeah, down, when they down, found down, the gold down. on the surface and they just, they kept, just kept following it down. down. Well, it's quite a story, the story of mining in Angel's Camp. Okay, now this is uh, a big water wheel. Now, what was that for, Guy? That water wheel was built by Mr. Carley. That's Joe Carley's father down there. And he built it just below where they had the garage. They were lower into town next practically in Angel's Creek. Mm -hmm. And he made an arasta. And they run the arasta with water power. See the water in the okay. pipe shooting there? That's an overshoot. And they fill up. When they fill up, they get heavy and they start to turn the wheel. So it starts and they to just turn keep the turning and turning. And then turn as the shaft goes over to the arasta. That turns those rocks I uh -huh. showed you on top of. Goes <laughs> yeah. around and around and around. And that's what grinds up the ore. That was during the Jubilee. I see, during the Fog Jump Jubilee. Mm -hmm. When did they start the Jubilee, do you know? 28. Hmm. And this is a picture of Angel's Camp. That's during the Jubilee, too. During the Jubilee. Now, all three of those are during. Beautiful band through. and the girls in their long mm -hmm. dresses. And then this is also during the Jubilee. It's the. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. They had the coolies showing their old shacks they have where they were doing the laundry. and. That's right, All we that. kind of forgot about the Chinese. Yeah, that's they what they did. They a lot of Chinese All in this laundry. Town. They did the laundry, they didn't work in the mines much? Mm -hmm. Did they work in the mines? No. Well, Chinamen were here in the early days before my time. They worked most all on the surface. Hmm. In other words, they swept what the white man, he figured he was getting too rich. He didn't care whether he got the fine stuff or not, but the Chinamen come along. He worked he, the hardest for the little <laughs> He got it all he got it on all. the surface. That's the whole story. Well, you know, I've really learned a lot about mining today, and I appreciate that. But you know, you showed me that old uh, carbide hat and the candle, and then I remember seeing uh, other hats that you had that you wore in more recent years. Why don't you show those to me? Okay. And to our audience. <laughs> I'm going to bring them up. I just, I guess was the next hard hat to go. That's fine. That's what, they put out the hard hat and to protect and your noggin. And this was after that soft after one. After the soft one. So it was so kind still of had the carbide light. They still put a different uh -huh. back on the carbide so you could just stick it on your head without even looking. Uh -huh. And then after that came the battery. Okay. That you put on See, a that's belt. That's heavy. Yeah. So, oh, you wore this on a belt. Uh -huh. And then you hook that back here. Didn't slow you down any, huh? No. <laughs> they got more than that today to make you carry a. So when you had, when they had candles in the mine, you had to carry candles. Right. And then when you had a, a carbide light, why well, you had to carry the little carbide can. Little pellets. carbide can. So then they went to this, this, would you call this an electric light because it has a battery, but it's yeah. still considered an electric lamp? Mm-hmm. Okay. Then you put it on, then they give you a nice belt to put it on. I see. Oh, I see the, the thing for the loops here. Mm -hmm. Oh. All set to go. <laughs> All set to go on the ground. <laughs> well, you still haven't convinced me I'd want to do it down there. <laughs> I'll try a creek. Does that still work? Hmm? Does that lamp still work? Yes, ma'am. Because mm -hmm. you're still using it, right? You're right, when you go on the ground. Oh, I forget about that. <laughs> oh, yeah.
Yes, it sure does. Can you see that? That light bother you? No, it's fine. How much light does that supply in a dark hole, though? Plenty. Plenty, huh? You can go down those holes and you put your hand right here on your face, you can't see it. It's darker than dark. I guess so. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I'm, there's a lot of people that would even be afraid to go in a mine with a light, <laughs> uh, let alone work in them for days and days. It must be something that you get used to. Yes, well, I guess, and he inherited it, I guess. Because your father was a miner? <laughs> yeah, and his miner. father, for most of his life. They, they came to California in 1849. Oh, they were true 49ers and then. And they came, and they landed in Plymouth. Over there in Amador County, that was Calaveras County at one at that time. Mm -hmm. It's a lot larger, right? I've heard that before. Like most of the family grew the big what they call the forest home over there belonged to my well, relations. Looking, I don't even know. And looking back over your years as a miner, do you have any regrets, or would you have done things differently had you the choice, or what? No, I don't think there was nothing else to do. <laughs> it's been a good life, huh? Yeah, fine. I have no faults. That's good. That's good to hear. You know, Guy, uh, mining was a tough life. And you worked in the mines all of these years, and you also worked at Calavera Cement Plant for years and years. Um, how many days a week did you work when you were at the cement plant? Seven days a week. Seven days a week? You worked seven when you changed shifts. The changed shifts, it was off two. Then you went from day to graveyard, graveyard three to eleven, three to eleven, back to days again. So there were three shifts. Though. Three shifts. Seven and days a week. Right. Work, yeah. eat, and sleep. Right. Work, eat, and sleep. <laughs> when you were working on the kill floor, I worked on the kill floor for a little over nine years, and you, every seventh year you got Christmas off and <laughs> fell on your day off. Oh, that's <laughs> Otherwise terrible. Otherwise you worked. That's terrible. It's just like. Come out of the mines. We'd come out of the mine dirty and wet. They had a nice change room. You wore your nice clothes up, you know, that put your clothes up, put on your dirty diggers down the <laughs> hole. Come out, take off your dirty diggers, take a nice shower, clean up, jump in the car, go down to Mills Corner, <laughs> have a couple of beers, and then uh. run home and say hello to mama and maybe put on your baseball shoes and go up and practice baseball till dark. And in the mines you worked again seven days a week. Day right, day seven, day seven days a week. Day day you had one day off in the in the in the mines when they first started in the gravel mines. That's all. And seven. yet you wouldn't change it. You wouldn't change. No, it heck no. I had a good time. Had a good time. Right. <laughs> had a lot of energy to go to work all day, seven days a week. Come home and have your couple of beers. Yeah. Then play baseball. Play baseball times. on. Um, sometimes you couldn't play because you were working on a Sunday, but sometimes if you sometimes were working you the right shift, you wouldn't get much sleep, but you played ball just the same. Gosh, Angel's Camp was a busy place then. With the, there yes. were 5,000 miners and 25 yeah. mines running. There was um, about a little over 20 saloons at one place, but there weren't that many when I was growing up in order to go in each one. Yeah. But yeah. before my time, I think it was a little over 20 saloons on the main street. Oh, for Pete's sakes. One for each mine. I guess. <laughs> Just about. I guess people didn't do too much in those days, play a little ball, go to church, Sunday no. dinners. See, there weren't very many automobiles. Everybody rode with somebody else. They always, now they got signs out, you know, pool. Well, we were pooling in the 30s. Oh, because, <laughs> so pooling heck, isn't new. <laughs> no, because heck, and maybe one guy in 10 had a car. Oh, goodness. Carlos Garage had a bus. They used to haul a bus, and then we went from uh, one mining camp to another to play ball. We left here on oh, real early one Saturday morning, went clean over to Bodie, over on the east side of the hmm. Sierras. Hmm. And on uh, September the 30th, of dec uh, what was uh, admission day, I'm pretty sure, uh -huh. and played ball two days, Saturday and Sunday. And then mm -hmm. after that, I'd come all the way home. That's a long oh, ride. What roads? <laughs> and uh, the, the true spirit of competition, I suppose, yes, between the miners. Yes, had a big celebration. <laughs> of course, now that's a, a big park over there. 
And of course, they had the Jubilee every year. But what else uh, went on in Angel's Camp? That's all, all they had dancing probably every Saturday night. They had a band in different places. They had mostly. a big woods hall. They had a big hall there in town that they used to. They played basketball there at the high school, town team, mm -hmm. and dancing. And, that's and then it. out at Monty's Inn and the other end of Aldeville, they had another dance hall there. And um, Bret Hart never had a basketball court, so we played basketball when we were in high school out at what we called Monty's Inn in the hmm. late 20s. So the place was a busy, busy, busy place, but yes. if the miners were always working, they didn't do too much playing around. No, <laughs> no way. But I guess uh, Jubilee Days were the big attractions oh, for yes, the year. Jubilee. They had parades and stuff right. like that. They had miners' bands. Miners' band. I know there's still one in existence, uh, from what I hear. There's mm -hmm. still a miners' band around. Mm -hmm. Have you ever played in a miners' no. band? No. No. Well, this has been very interesting. I've really enjoyed this. I learned a lot about mining, enough to know I don't ever want to do it. Oh. <laughs> Not like that, anyway. And I really appreciate you coming and talking with us and sharing with us your old experiences of Angel's Camp. And I know our audience will enjoy it, too.